Hi, this video should be titled Streptococcus. Okay, so get a purple pen because you probably know, if you're watching this video already, that Streptococcus is gram positive, and you notice that I'm arranging it in chains. And that is how it grows, and it is what it means. So strepto means chains, and caucus means spheres, so it's chains of spheres. And we make it purple, because when you put right stain on the cells and do a gram stain, then they should appear purple when you're all done. So they are gram positive. And then chains of cocci. Uh, generally, streptococcus is sensitive to penicillin, and that's good news. Um, and penicillin type drugs like amoxicillin, etc. And streptococcus is catalase negative, which is kind of interesting because many of the medically significant bacteria we learn about uh, do have catalase. And catalase is an enzyme that's important in um, living around oxygen and not being damaged by it too much. And so Streptococcus has other ways of living around oxygen without having it be too damaging. Okay, so what we're gonna do is split Streptococcus uh, into two big groups. Um, and the way we're gonna do that is based on their ability to damage red blood cells. So we're going to start with the um, ones that don't harm um, red blood cells or perhaps only partially do. So that's what this is alpha hemolytic. Gamma hemolytic means they don't affect red blood cells at all. I tend to group them in as alpha hemolytic because strains do funny things sometimes too that you wouldn't expect. So we'll just say though they definitely aren't beta hemolytic. And the first species we'll put here is Streptococcus pneumoniae. And what you'll maybe hear this called when people are talking about vaccines is pneumococcus. So the word pneumo means lung. And um, so this is a bacteria that can frequently cause pneumonia, streptococcus pneumoniae. And it lives in most of us in our nasopharynx or in the nasal passages. And because it is such a big causer of pneumonia, when it gets out of whack, so that said, it's normally inside most of our nasal passages, but in some of us then it can start growing um, too heavily compared to other bacteria and cause disease, sinus infections, um, ear infections. So otitis media, that's middle ear, is what it stands for. That doesn't really look like an ear. It's supposed to be an ear. Uh, sinus, sinusitis. That's inflammation of the sinuses. And there's someone's nose. And then, of course, pneumonia itself. That would be if it gets far enough down in the respiratory tree. And those are maybe the worst lungs you've ever seen drawn. <laughs> I don't know what that looks like. Lungs, I better write it on there. You're not gonna remember when you study this later. Okay, so um, this has been a target for vaccines um, with the idea that it can help save the lives of young children and elderly people that both get pneumonia. That said, uh, the vaccines leave something to be desired. They have a number of problems. Uh, PCV or PPVE, these are vaccines, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, P, uh, PV, I'll talk about that one first. Um, this is a pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, which basically means they took the bacterial cells, chunked them up, and um, now that they're, they're dead, though, they can inject them um, into a person, and the person will theoretically make um, antibodies and have an immune response to those chunks of the streptococcus cell. Um, 
And the problem is, is that our bodies don't make antibodies uh, long term or as effectively uh, to parts of a cell wall as uh, we do to proteins. And so what, um, what then was developed are, is the uh, pneumococcal conjugated uh, vaccine. And that's uh, usually what's given to children because they especially don't make uh, a lot of antibodies in response to just a polysaccharide. So problem, uh, the, one of the problems with these vaccines is that they aren't as effective as um, might be wanted. Um, and the people they need to protect the most, like really allergenic or asthmatic children, are going to have the least immune response to them. So they'll be the least effective with them. The other problem, maybe this is even a bigger problem, is that there are so many different strains of Streptococcus that these might cover as many as 10 or 15. Like there's a PCV13 covers 13 strains, but there's still so many other strains out there that it's not going to provide full protection to Streptococcus pneumoniae. And then that's not even getting into the argument about whether um, if this is normal flora in many people, if it is a vaccine that should be routinely given. So, um, okay, next up, Streptococcus mutans. And you can hear in its name, it mutates things. So that mutate just means change. So it changes the enamel on the teeth wears it away and then drills a hole essentially in uh, your teeth. What is a, that's what cavity literally means, um, is a hole in the teeth and that's a tooth. Can't you tell it's a molar? So what's cool about uh, S mutans is it uses carbohydrates. So any carbohydrates that come through the mouth. Well, I guess I should say the simple ones are more likely because it's as they're broken down into glucose. Um, and some of that does happen in the mouth. But anyway, so uh, sugar uh, to make a slime layer. So it's, uh, you've learned about capsules. It's not uh, called a capsule because it's not as hard as a capsule. It's slimy. So we call it a slime layer and it helps the, um, helps the bacteria adhere to the teeth. We call the bacteria that stick to the teeth plaque. And then I think that it's becoming more and more apparent that mouth health and heart health and blood vessel heart health are related. So um, I just want to mention on here that they're now finding that the same bacteria that cause decay and gingivitis and things like that in the mouth are actually being found in atheromas, meaning uh, blood vessel plaques. And I think it's interesting that the name is the same too, right? A plaque in a blood vessel, plaque on your teeth. Talk about fascinating. Nope, oh, there you go. Sorry, it got blurry on you. So mouth bacteria are also prevalent in atherosclerotic plaques. Okay, that's almost nine minutes, so I'm going to take a break here, and I'll come back with part two of Streptococcus.